Have you ever wondered why you're not able to get the Word of God to work in your life? Well, the wondering stops here and now. In this podcast, we will answer these questions through supernatural revelation of the Word of God as we meditate the Word together. My name is Craig Venn, and this is the Sunday Recap Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Sunday Recap Podcast. My name is Craig, um, and I'm glad to be here with you on this uh, KBMI YouTube channel, um, our local church, wonderful church, wonderful ministry that God is raising up and has continued to raise up powerfully under the watchful eye and the great, great leadership of uh, the Apostle of the House, Apostle Vernon Aronser, who is the senior pastor as well. We have a number of different locations around the Western and Southern Cape. Uh, we got three at the moment, and there is a fourth one coming up pretty soon. I'm excited about that one. Um, the, there are movements happening, and it's, it's exciting to see. Uh, on this podcast for the last couple of, uh, couple of weeks, uh, we have been dealing with uh, the anointing for assignment and perspective. And perspective. And um, we have uh, we have enjoyed that. This is going to be episode number twenty seven. Um, and at, at this current stage, I don't know when it is that you are going to be watching this or listening to this uh, in your own time. But at this current stage, right now, we are getting ready for Pentecost. Pentecost is coming up. We've had a week of prayer um, and intercession. Five a.m. prayer and intercession. Tonight, we're going to be going up to KBMI head office in Solaris Pass here in the Helderberg. We're going to have all night prayer. So from midnight until pro probably around about five o'clock, we're going to be praying and uh, we're going to be interceding and getting ourselves ready for Sunday morning Pentecost, all day Pentecost and Sunday. And we, in fact, had a great time teaching about that a couple of nights ago. You can catch it on the Facebook page. Um, we just enjoyed a fellowship around the Word of God and a Bible study. And um, and then, uh, yeah, Sunday morning we'll be in prayer as well. So if this is coming to you before then, so make sure that you get onto the Facebook page if you can't make it down to the church um, and enjoy the time with us. Again, we've been dealing with perspective. And in this episode, in the previous episode, we talked about uh, gaining perspective of the love of God, gaining a perspective for God's love for us and how do we effectively in script and scripturally love him back so very very important so excuse me we are going to carry on with our subject of perspective um, and this episode we are going to title perspective perspective if you can see it you can have it perspective if you can see it if you, you can have it and i remember Years and years ago, before we even landed in Solaris Pass, we were in a scouts hall set up in Strand. And Pastor landed on that altar that day. Oh my goodness gracious me. All them years ago. And preached this message, first time I ever heard it. Clearly it was something that had been resonating with him for some time. And the power of God began to move. If you can see it, you can have it. And we're going to deal again, perspective specs spectacles it's, it's talking about eyes it's talking about vision it's talking about what you see if you can see it you can have it and we're going to deal with some of that in this podcast today so let's take a moment to pray together and uh and then we're going to get into our bible lessons today our bible lesson on perspective if you can see it you can have it heavenly father we give you glory and praise and worship and honor we thank you that it's not by might nor by power but by your spirit and we place ourselves before your word to be taught by your word and to receive revelation knowledge from heaven hallelujah jesus kurabasada and we will give you all the praise and all the worship and all the honor in jesus mighty name amen now let's go over to the book of joshua chapter number one joshua chapter number one Verse 8, very well-known portion of Scripture or verse of Scripture. Uh, Joshua chapter number 1, verse 8. Let me just share the screen over here so you can see it. <clears throat> Booyah. In fact, let me see if I can do this. All right, let's, 
Uh, let's do this uh, to see if it might, might help if I do it another way. Uh, let's do that one. No, it's not going to let me do it. Uh, no, don't want to let me do it. All right, doesn't matter. Let's do this over here and uh, let's look at this. Joshua chapter number one, verse eight. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Oh, I can worry, 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 I can now is it better for the Afrikaans mensen, want hulle gaan vir my skel, want in die verlede, die, 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 die laaste episode het ek niks Afrikaans gepraat nie, en ek ken vir die Afrikaanse die baar is, hulle soek die Afrikaans. So die Afrikaans is nou by. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but, but what, but, let me just see if I can get this over, over here, so we have that like that. But you shall meditate. This is what this podcast is for, is to help you meditate therein day and night. Not when it's convenient, not when it feels good, not when you're not doing anything else. Day and night. That you may observe. That you may observe. What does it mean to observe? It's to look at, to see. Remember, we're talking about perspective, and we're saying, if you can see it, you can have it. If you can see it, you can have it. And he is saying now, that you, how, so how do I see? I meditate. Meditate brings observance, or here it is, here's the word, revelation. Revelation is something is revealed to me that I may observe to do. It's revelation. To do so I can see and then I can do according to all that is written therein. So get it? Meditation brings revelation and that helps me to do according to all that is written therein. Let's go through that again. Important to understand because if you don't get that, doing the word is always going to be an issue. The book of the law does not depart out of my mouth, not out of my mind, out of my mouth. But you shall meditate. You're going to what? Meditate. You are going to meditate the word day and night. So you meditate so that you may have a revelation so that you can do according to all that is written therein. It's a formula, guys. works every time. Works every, every single time this works. It, it's not for some, and it does, it's not, uh, it's, it, it doesn't work for these people, not for those. Come on, big Afrikaans. Hierdie wetboek mag nie uit jou mond weik nie. Het mag nie. Het moet in jou, in jou mond wees die hele tyd. Niks anders nie. Maar, bepeins dit dag en nacht. Bepeins dit dag en nacht. So that, jy moet het bepeins, het moet in jou mond wees, jy moet het bepeins, so that jy nou geset kan handel, volgens alles wat daarin geskrywe staan. Jy moet nou geset kan handel. You gotta do the word. So dit vat, jy moet het bepeins, nummer 1, dag en nacht, so dat jy nou geset kan handel. Jy gaan het doen. As jy dit bepeins, sal jy nou geset kan handel. You'll be able to do it. Now the English says it a little bit better on this occasion, believe it or not. I know the Afrikaans people say no, never, but it actually does. This book of the law shall not depart, it won't leave your mouth, but you shall meditate, they said it bepeins, dag en nacht, night and day, that you may have a revelation, you may observe, so that you can do. Right? Meditate, in your mouth, meditate, revelation comes from meditation. If you're not getting revelations because you're not thinking about the word, and then you'll be able to do the word. All right, but the point here is that you're observing, you're able to see it. If you can't see it, you can't have it. 
If you can't see it, you can't have it. According to then, then you shall make your way prosperous and you shall have good success. That's when it happens. When you have it. If you can see it, you can have it. All right, let's go to Joshua chapter 6. What's this, Klein? Joshua. Let's go over here to chapter number 6. And carry on with, if you can see it, we're gaining perspective. If you can see it, uh, you can have it. One of our favorite scriptures. And now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none went in. Maar Jericho het sy poorte gesluit en was gesluit van wie die kinders van Israel. Niemand het uit of in gegaan nie. Jericho is closed. Jericho is toe. Niemand in, niemand uit. Want die kinders van Israel is nabij en hulle weet hulle. They know they come in. So they shut them up. Because why? They heard what God had done in opening the Red Sea and how God had plundered and used uh, Israel, had used the children of, of Israel to plunder Egypt. Verse 2. And the Lord, and the Lord said unto Joshua, said what? See, I have given into thine hand Jericho. Never mind the fact that over here it's still shut up. But he said, you've got to see, I have given into your hand, Jericho. You must see it. Never mind this. It's all closed up. This over here, this whole situation, it's closed. But he is saying, I want you to see. To the year of Joshua gesê, kyk, ek gee Jericho, Jericho met sy koning en dapper helde in jou hand. Ek wil, ek wil hy, jy moet kyk, jy moet iets sien, kan sien, die is al klaar in jou hande, maar sy poorte is toe. Maar ek wil hy, jy moet die sien nie. I don't want you to look at that issue. I want you to look, I don't want you to look at the issue that the bank balance is on zero. I don't want you to look at the issue that there's no money in account, that there's sickness in your body, that you just got laid off at work, that the divorce is coming, that your children are not doing well. I don't want you to look at that. I want you to look at my promise in the word of God. What does my word say about the issue? Because if you can see it, you can have it. All right, moving on. And you shall compass the city, all you men of war go around about the city once, thou shalt thou do six days. We've seen that. Now, <clears throat> let's go one more time here to another scripture. If you can what? If you can see it, you can have it. Deuteronomy 1 and 8. Deuteronomy 1 and 8 says, Behold, see. Behold. Cake. Is it in the Afrikaans? Cake. I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give unto them and to the seed of them. Behold, see that. Even though there's people living there, even though there's giants, there's somebody occupying. Ek gee die land aan jylle oor. Ek maar, jy moet kyk en jy moet het sien. Jy moet die kan sien. Because if you can't see the land in your possession, if you can't see that situation solved and in a favorable outcome for you, then you can't have it. Many times the situation's gotten so bad that you literally can't see. So stop looking. Stop looking over there and start getting into the word of God. Start getting into the word so that you start seeing the right thing. Remember, in your mouth, so that you can meditate, so that you can get a revelation, so that you can do. Those are the four steps. Okay, moving on. Uh, Genesis 15, Genesis chapter number 15, going to see something pretty cool here, I think you're going to like this one, Genesis chapter number 15, mm, here it is, Genesis hoofstuk 15, vers 1, mense wat die Afrikaans is goed kyk, dankie kyk, nie is goed kyk, jy praat lekker Afrikaans, 
After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, in a, in a what? In a vision, because he's got to see. If you can see it, you can have it, saying, Fear not, Abraham, or Abram. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Na hierdie dinge het die woord van die Heere tot Abram gekom in a gesig, in a vision. En gesê, vrees nie Abram, ek is vir jou a skuld en jou loon is baie groot. You have a great reward. And, check this out now, and and Abram said, Lord God, wilt God, Lord God, what wilt thou give me? Seeing I go, seeing, seeing I go childless. He's looking at the wrong thing here. He's looking at the wrong thing. And the steward of my house is this Elias of Damascus. To uh, to fra Abram, yere yere, wat sal i my gee aangesien? Ek aangesien. Aangesien, jy kyk na die verkeerde ding, Abraham, jy moet nie die sien nie, jy moet sien wat die Heere gesê. Moe nie kyk na die ding wat jy sien, kyk die boe in die, in die vorige skrif wat sê die Heere. Toe vraag Abraham, Heere, Heere, wat sal jy my gee aangesien, ek sonder kinders heen gaan en die erfgenaam van my huis die Damaskener Eliezer is. Verder het Abram gesê aan, gesê aan my het jy geen nageslag gegeen nie. So sal dan die bediende van my huis my erfgenaam wees. Again, hy kyk na die verkeerde ding. Kyk hier Abram, kyk hier na die v- 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 vorige skrif, vorige vers. And Abram said, behold to me, behold to me thou is given no seed. He says, behold, look. No, stop looking at that thing. Look over here. What's it? What did the Lord say? And lo, one born in my house is mine heir. Verse 4. And behold, there it is again. Behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be in thine heir. I want you to look. This shall not be in thine heir. But he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell or count the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. So what's he doing? He's giving him something to look at. He's giving a, a, He's changing the picture for him to look at so that he can see. Remember, if you can see it, you can have it. He's only been able to see what's happening on the inside of his tent. Just this Eliezer. But he's saying, let me change what you're seeing. Let me take you beyond what you're seeing and out here. And I'm going to give you a different picture. Because if you can see it, you can have it. Vers 5. Daarop lei hy hom uit na buiten met die woorde. Kijk nou op na die hemel. Kijk. Kijk, Abraham. Na die hemel en tel die sterre as jy hulle kan tel. En hy sê vir hom, so sal jou nageslag wees. Ek wil die prentjie verander. Jy kyk nou hier binnen in jou tent vir Eliezer, um, die bediende, en jy dink die gaan die erfnaam, erf, erfnaam is dit, erfnaam wees, maar die heren sê, ek moet die prentjie in jou gedachte moet ek verander. Ek moet verander wat jy sien, because if you can see it, you can, as jy dit sien, kan jy dit het. Amen. One last scripture here. I think we got time, yeah. One one last scripture in this lesson. Uh, let me see how far back we can go over here. Yeah, this is what I'm looking for. Booyah, that should do it, yes. Okay, now this is a bit of bit of uh, interesting scripture to go have a look at. And the sons of the prophet said unto Elisha, Behold now the place where we dwell with you is too small. And we were talking about this this morning in our Bible, in, in our uh, prayer time, we were talking about this. And the sons of the prophet said unto Elisha, Behold now the place where we dwell with you. Note, we dwell with you is too small. 
Let us go, we pray you, unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, take some wood, and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, the, holy, the, the uh, anointed man of God said, Go. And he put a fear to see us. Het vir Elisa gesê, kyk toch die plek waar ons voor u woon is vir ons te nou. Laat ons toch naar die Jordaan gaan en elk een daar vandaan een balk gaan haal, dat ons daar vir ons een plek kan maak om daar te woon. En hy het gesê, gaan. Okay, and one said, be content, I pray thee. Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So they were very clear. They gaan neer en sonder die saal van nie. Die seens van die profeet gesê, ons sal gaan, ons moet gaan, ons moet nou een groter plek, die plek waar ons nou blij is te nou, ons moet een groter plek gaan kry of bou, maar ons wil glat die saal, of sonder die saal van gaan nie, sonder die godsman, gaan ons neer en sien. Maar een gesê, Een sê, gaan toch asjeblief saam met die dienaars, en die antwoord, en hy antwoord, ek sal gaan. Number 4, verse 4, So he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood, but as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water, and he cried and said, Last master, for it was borrowed. Jylle ken toch die skrif deel. En hy het saam met hulle gegaan, en toe hulle by die Jordaan kom, het hulle bome omgekap, Maar terwijl een die balk kap, val die eister in die water, en hy roep uit en sê, Ach, my Heer, dit is nogal geleen. And the man of God said, Where far did he shut in place? And he cut down a stick and cast it in dither, and the iron did swim. En die man van God vraag, Waar het het geval? En toe hy hom die plek wees, het hy een stok afgesnui, en dit daarheen gegooi, en die eister boe laat drijven. So this is miraculous power. This is an anointed man of God. We're very clear in that. There's no doubt in our mind that Elisha is carrying the anointing. Therefore said he, take it up to thee. And he put it in his hand and took it. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel. The king of Syria is at war with Israel. Die koning van Aram bezig was om oorlog te voer in Israel het hy met sy dienaars beraadslaag en gesê, op die en die plek sal my laar staan. Now watch this now. In such and such place shall be my camp. And the man of God said unto the king of Israel, saying, beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians will come down. So the Syrians, the Syrian king has counsel with his dudes, with his captains. And the man of God says to the king of Israel, don't go down that way, because that's where the king of Syria is going to be. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God had told him and warned him of and saved himself there, not once, nor twice. So two, three, four, five times. It doesn't say how many times, but not once or twice. It's a lot of times. Every time, every time the Syrian king is setting an ambush for the king of Israel and for the armies of Israel, Elisha is telling them, don't go there, go there, because the king's waiting for you. How does he do that? By the anointing that's on him. How? Because he saw it. He has perspective. He's looking from an anointed point of view. He's looking from the point of view of the anointing. Does that make sense to you? Praise God. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was so troubled for this thing, and he called his servants and said unto them, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? He's saying there's a spy. The Syrian king, the, the, the enemy of Israel, is saying there's a spy. En een van sy dienaars antwoord, nie my Heer die koning, maar Elisa die profeet wat in Israel is, kan die koning van Israel die woorde te kenne gee wat jy in jy slaapkamer spreek. Wanneer we sê, ben jy in jou bedroom, the Holy Spirit is telling, is telling the king, is telling Elisha to go and tell the king. There is nothing hidden from the Holy Spirit family. Hallelujah. En hy sê, gaan kyk waar hy is, dat ek hom kan laat vang, en daar is aan hom te kenne gegeen, en gesê, hy is daar in dood aan. And he said, go and spy where he is, so that I may send and fetch him, and it was told him, saying, behold, he is in Dothan, therefore sent he here the horses and chariots, and a great host. 
a great host. That's thousands of people. He wants this man dead. And they came by night and compassed the city. They stood around the entire city. They, what did they do? They circulated the city. The city's here in the middle. And they surrounded the city. Okay. So it had a dar in perde in straight vans and a swar leer gestuur. And he had the night gekom in the stad omsingel. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, and host compassed the city about, both with horses and chariots. And his servants said unto him, what did they say unto him? Alas, my master, how shall we do? And to the dinar van die man van God vroeg opstaan. See, dinars van die man van God moet vroeg opstaan. Die dinars moet vroeg opstaan. Anders vang die vijand vir jou man. Die, die vijand gaan vir jou vang as die dinars, die jong manne, nie vroeg opstaan nie. Da is a word van die jyre mense. If the young men, the servants of the men of God, don't stand up early, the, the, they, you will not be able to tell the man of God that we are encompassed. We are here. Yeah, we are circulated. Kurabashantaba. Stand up early, servants of God. Servants of the men of God. Stand up early. And he answered, Fear not. Why? Because you got love in your heart. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Maar hy antwoord, vrees nie, want die wat by ons is, is meer as die wat by hulle is. Now that doesn't make any sense, because this, this Syrian king sent a swaar leer. Hy het duisende manne gestuur. Hy het klomp strijdwaans, perde en strijdwaans rondom die staat. Hmm. Praise God. Verse 17, and Elisha prayed. He said, don't, don't, don't be afraid. There's more for us than there are with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes so that he might see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. And he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. En Elisa het gebid en gesê, Heere, open toch sy oor, open wat? Open toch sy oor, open so, toch sy oor, dat hy kan sien. If you can see it, you can have it. As jy dit kan, kan sien, kan jy dit het. En die Heere het die oor van sy dienaar geopen, dat hy kon sien, dat hy kon sien. En met eens was die berg vol perde en waans van vier rondom Elisa. En toe hulle na hom afgekom het, hulle is uh, tot die Heere gebid en gesê, slaan toch hierdie mense met blindheid. En hy het, die, het hulle op die woord van Elisa met blindheid geslaan. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, smite this people. I want you to open the eyes of the servant, but I want you to give the, the enemies blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. And we are clear about how all of that worked out because they were led out of the place and into a place where they were gone. And, and Elisha obviously won the day. Family, I can, I can, uh, I can pray and, and, and believe God that we have gained an understanding of how to see things now. A perspective, if you can see it, you can have it, but you must be able to see. Here's the formula one more time. Remember, we're talking about perspective. We're talking about if you can see it, you can have it. Here is Joshua 1.8. Here is the formula once again. Get it in here. 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 This book of the law, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate. You're going to meditate in it day and night that you may observe, you can see in it what to do, that you, may observe, uh, uh, that you may observe to do according, that you may observe so that you can do. If you can see it, then you can do it, and if you can do it, then you can have it. That you may observe to do according to all that is written therein, and you will make your way prosperous, and you will have good success. Take Joshua 1 and 8, write it out, put it on the fridge so that you can see it every time you go into the fridge every day. That's like 15, 16 times a day, I'm sure. If you go in there 
get it in your eyes, get it in your ears, get it in your mouth, and get it in your mind, get it in your heart. And you'll be able to see. And if you can see it, then you can do it. And if you can do it, then you can have it. If you can see it, you can have it. I trust this episode has been a blessing to you like it's been to me. We love you. We're praying for you. We'll see you on the next episode. Bye for now.